This is the latest Regen project. This is the, the third house in Regen 5. See the beautiful old floors. And these cabinets, these built-in cabinets are just beautiful. And tall ceilings. This is the garage. Advantages of cooperative living are numerous. And uh, people that live together and share resources, share things, share ideas, share each other's presence, sharing utilities within the house and, and a washing machine, uh, refrigerator, sharing all these things ultimately consumes less energy for than if everybody was living in separate apartments with their own separate everything that costs less for the, the occupants. And, um, certainly far cheaper to live in, in a fully furnished co-op with a number of other people sharing all these things than, uh, than trying to live in an apartment by yourself. What about a sense of community? Community's real important. I mean, it's in, uh, the community here at the Regen House has definitely been growing over the last few years. Uh, um, it's nice to have a diverse mix of people who kind of, with different interests, different ideas, sharing some of these ideas with each other, um, uh, developing relationships with each other. I love it, community living. So you're finishing a thesis and uh, th this is really going to be your life, sort of, is uh, regenerative living and, yeah. and new new ways of doing things? Well, yeah, yeah, it has been for a while now. This is the, this is the third intentional community I've lived in, in the last 10 years. Um, I really enjoy it. Some best friends I've made in my life. I've met in, in a bunch of different communities such as this. And uh, it's, a, it's a great atmosphere and, and you really, um, uh, I think ultimately it's, it's, a, it's a good model and good, good thing to do for the environment and for society, kind of people kind of living together, not just holed up in their little individual boxes and, and um, sort of maximizing resource use by having a number of different people uh, living together and using these different so, things. So would you call it anti-sprawl in a way? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, we're, we're uh, at the Regen, the Regen Co-op is, is definitely, um, um, we're, we're maximizing space for, for people living there and, and uh, um, the, the houses are pretty densely populated, which which definitely eliminates sprawl and people kind of spreading out. And I think it's a good thing. Yet it makes uh, much less impact on the land, and and people live, you know, they with solar power on the roof and electric cars. That's an electric pickup there. Is this a is this a biodiesel truck? Yeah, yeah, that truck runs on biodiesel. So this this is biodiesel. I guess you'd have more electric cars if if they were available. But you use yeah. solar power, and um, and but I noticed this ground is pretty rough here. What are you What are you planning to do with all this? Well, we just weeded that. We're uh, we're we we just acquired this house, and so we're we're planning on pretty much tearing out all the grass and, and redoing the whole landscaping for a more edible landscape. Edible landscape. Yeah. So. We're thinking this this will pretty much all come out. We're gonna gonna grow as much food here as we can for for people living here. Um, again, maximizing space and resources that we have immediately available to us. You a said, lot of the food we do purchase we buy from local the local farmers market, coming from from local farms, organic food. Uh, the houses are are equipped with solar electricity. This one we have plans for doing the same solar electricity and solar on the roof. Solar hot water, yeah, on the roof. Do a solar hot water system, gray water systems, rerouting the showers and sinks to feed fruit trees in the lawn. and uh, Gray water systems to save water and save energy? Mm -hmm. What about those trees? Are they just going to be stuck in the ground? or? No, no, we're, uh, uh, we got those for free. There are a number of fruit trees, but we're, we're free in the trees. process. Free trees, yeah. Free trees, okay. But we're in the process of developing a... Uh, uh, Sort of landscape plan for the whole for the whole site here. We, we really don't want to just start haphazardly planting stuff everywhere. We, we kind of want to develop a pretty good plan and um, um, for efficiency and. Well, there's one fruit tree there, and it's a pretty well established. That yeah, there's two there. that were here. There's a lemon tree. This is the far yeah. one, and this is a plum, I believe. 
So uh, there certainly is a lot of potentiality here. I, I can see that you have a lot of planning and a lot of work to do. Does yeah. it does it bother you to do this kind of this amount of work? Oh no, it's great. It's great. It's a lot of fun. You're kind yeah. of manipulating your environment that to improve uh, uh, land use and resource use. And Improving land use and resource use is nothing better than that. Yeah. You've been looking look at the electricals here. This is like legacy electricals. So there's. There's a lot to be done, and it's a very daunting task, but I, I'm glad that there are young people that are prepared to do all this work, because this is really the future. Electric cars, you know, solar power, solar water heaters, community living, and edible landscape. You know, there's, there's no need to use pesticides. We can use natural means of, of reducing rodent populations, etc. You know, when you poison rodents, you also poison their predators. We should have owls that, that go after rodents and ground yeah, squirrels we're and things. We're definitely looking to bring some owls into the co-op. Owls? We're, we're interviewing owls. Owls in the co-op? Yeah. That would be yeah. great. Yeah. When you do edible landscaping, uh, Matt, uh, you, how much of your own food can you grow? Uh, <clears throat> well, that really depends on on how much energy and inputs you decide to put into it. Um, there's a wonderful family in Pasadena, the Dervais family, that they've, they've proven that they could raise over 6,000 pounds of food on an eighth of an acre. And uh, um, I don't know if we'll come close to that, but they, they, are, they definitely created a model. They're, they're shooting for 10,000 pounds this year, so they're, they're definitely proving that it can be done. You can raise a lot of food on very little land if you really put in the energy. And then you know that it's organic because you know what went on it. Oh yeah. What are you going to do with the front lawn, Matt? Front lawn? Most likely it's going to come out. We're going to put in some uh, edible landscape. Just edible like, landscape just like here too? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I think so. This is, this is the north side of the house, so it's, it's, it doesn't get as much sun over here. But we're probably going to do um, um, definitely some landscape design. This corner here, we, we, we feel like there's a real opportunity with this corner for creating some kind of uh, uh, maybe bench or community area for p even just pedestrians walking by who can kind of hang out there. There's a great organization in uh, Portland, Oregon called City Repair. City Repair. Yeah, and they do, uh, they do stuff like this. They take corners like this and maybe paint the street and have some sort of... Uh, funky looking bench there or something to try mm -hmm. and encourage community with, with people even living in the neighborhood. It's a community of the neighborhood. That's really yeah. revitalizing our inner city neighborhoods. This yeah, is a, yeah, and so yeah. we see this corner as a, as a potential for that and we, uh -huh. we're, we've been discussing maybe doing something like that. There's just a lot of, lot of potential here for anybody who's moving in to, to really get involved in a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Well, it's certainly be more productive to have edible landscape than to have grass here, that's for sure. The grass looks good, but... Yeah, we, we really have no interest in just watering using this. It's really kind of an excessive use of water, and, and uh, a lot of these grasses aren't native to this area, and it's just not... Um, we're part of a, a great organization in the area here called Food Not Lawns. Food Not Lawns, yeah. really? Yeah, we go in and, I and love this. tear out people's lawns and, and replace them with, with edible gardens. Food Not Lawns, yeah. that's a great idea. So we'll probably get Food Not Lawns here some some point next year, and we'll just uh, we'll go at it. Do you have any idea how much water it takes to keep a lawn healthy? Too much, 70 inches or so? 70 inches of water just Se as... 70 a year or something? 70 a year, and, and we only have 11 inches of rain here, so yeah. we must import that other 59 inches from somewhere. 70 inches, let's see, that's about that that high of water to keep this lawn healthy. Or we could have less of that water to make food. Wouldn't that be a better idea? Yeah, yeah, it definitely makes sense. Keep, that's, it doesn't get any more local than that in your, your front yard. 